Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with a Spain News update. We'll have a look at some of the main stories that have caught my attention in the press today in Spain. We'll have a look at some comments that have been left on the channel in recent times also. But before I get into the news, a big thanks to all of the people that have supported the channel in recent times, whether it's by buying me a coffee, whether it's through the new Super Thanks option on YouTube, whether it's the longer term supporters on Patreon, or the new members of the channel on YouTube. Thank you very much for that support. Now straight into the news and it's all about the farmers strike in Spain that started yesterday. Unhappy farmers have taken to the streets blocking roads around the country and causing chaos. And as we can read here, farmers again cause road closures in several Spanish provinces. Farmers are leading the second day of protests with their tractors on Wednesday, causing roadblocks in several Spanish cities to demand fair prices for their products, reject the complexity of EU regulations and call for the maintenance of the tax reduction on agricultural diesel. In Catalonia, the tractor march against neglect and bureaucracy started at 8am from Girona and is making its way to Barcelona via the AP7 highway. Asked about the situation of the countryside during the control session, the head of the government, Pedro Sánchez, has committed to strengthening the food chain law, implementing mirror clauses in food imports, simplifying the Common Agricultural Policy, the CAP, and facilitating adaption to European regulations. So farmers in Spain unhappy with agricultural policy, bureaucracy is also difficult for them, and the high cost of diesel forcing them onto the streets to protest and cutting off roads around the country. As we saw there, they're trying to get into the big cities, they're trying to get into the centre of Madrid, and they're trying to get to the centre of Barcelona, and the Civil Guard and other police forces are trying to stop that from happening. Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez has also spoken on the matter, announcing some changes, but will this please the farmers? Don't know. Time will tell. Now, there's been a lot of talk about who is behind this farmer's protest, who is organising this farmer's protest. And according to news reports here in Spain today, one of the main ringleaders of this protest is a Valencian farmer. And as we can read here, Lola Guzman, the Valencian woman who is leading the farmer's revolt, riding a red tractor, waving a large Spanish flag with a bull as the emblem, and dressed in a big scarf and sneakers, the Valencian livestock farmer, Lola Guzman has topped off the great agricultural mobilization on the 6th of February with her leadership of this independent platform. She has managed to get ahead of the major agricultural organizations in the calendar and has successfully channeled the strong underlying discontent among farmers and livestock farmers against the drift towards environmental regulations imposed by Europe. Early in the morning, she was ecstatic after weeks of work where I've only slept four hours each day as she confessed on her social networks her true pulpit from which she has been firing at everyone left and right and where she has managed to win over a multitude of followers. And we can see a picture below of Ms. Guthman, taken at a rally in Madrid, no doubt, with some people who apparently used to be her friends. And I say used to there because Ms. Guthman has come out on social media platforms saying that she no longer supports any political party. She used to be a supporter of Vox, different pictures on the internet of her at rallies around the country supporting that political party. But apparently today, nowadays, she is not supporting a political party, or at least that's what she's saying. Some, however, would argue that the people behind this farmer's protest are not only seeking better conditions for farmers in Spain, but are also showing their discontent with the current government. I don't know. Let me know your opinion in the comment section below. Now on to another piece of news and the European song competition Eurovision is making headlines in Spain today. Eurovision always seems to make headlines around this type of year because of some controversy or another and apparently the song chosen this year to represent Spain at Eurovision is controversial. And as we can read here, Eurovision 2024, what's behind the controversy over Spain's Thorra Entry. Call a man Thorro, he's a rascal. Call a woman Thorra, she's a slag. Warning, this article contains language some people may find offensive. Right from the start, 
Every year, the Benidorm Fest is held to find Spain's Eurovision entry, and millions tune in. Eight acts perform in the final and are selected via a series of votes, including a jury and televoting by viewers at home. The winner then represents Spain at that year's Eurovision Song Contest, which is being held in the Swedish city of Malmo. This year, the Spanish dance electro-pop group Nebulosa emerge victorious and will perform their hit Thorra on the 11th of May at Eurovision. So far, so scripted, except that the song seems to have divided Spanish society, with many clutching their pearls in dismay. You see, Thorra is the Spanish word for vixen, but it is almost always used as an insult, similar to or in English. So there we go, another controversial song representing Spain at this year's Eurovision contest in Malmo in Sweden, the 11th of May, if anybody's interested. And yes, that is the Spanish pronunciation of that word. Thorro or Thorra. And as we saw in that article, call a man a Thorro and he's a rascal, but call a woman a Thorra and it means something completely different. And that is where the controversy lies. So Spanish society once again divided over the use of this word, the name of that song that's going to represent their country at Eurovision. But in any case, I imagine it's going to be good for ratings. And the final piece of news today, and some good news coming out of the south of Spain, and it is that a monkey that escaped from Gibraltar into Spanish territory has been caught. As we can read here, Gibraltar monkey finally captured in Spain's La Línea de la Concepción two days after crossing over the border. A monkey that crossed from Gibraltar into La Línea de la Concepción and wandered through the Spanish border town streets for two days, much to the bemusement of onlookers, was finally captured on Tuesday the 6th of February. The primate even wandered around two secondary schools, Mendez Tolosa and Virgen de la Esperanza, evading police efforts to capture it. The sight came as a surprise as the animals live in the upper part of the Rock of Gibraltar, so it is not known how it reached the town in Spain. Social media lit up with hundreds of comments and memes about the bizarre incident, with some joking that the macaque has colonised La Línea de la Concepción or is sending a clear message for a Brexit deal to be done now. So that cheeky little monkey that decided to come down off the rock down there in Gibraltar crossed the border into Spanish territory, into La Línea de la Concepción, finally caught yesterday, Tuesday, by police, I believe. A bizarre incident indeed in that part of Spain. Now let's have a look at some comments that have been left on videos recently. One here from Baycast, it's all down to money, read the water, but why couldn't they have allocated the EU funding that they struggled to spend? When I arrived here 24 years ago, the country was suffering from a drought, so I sincerely hope these new measures are not too little, too late. Yeah, Baycast, thanks for the comment and good question. Why isn't the government spending some of that EU money that it hasn't been able to spend up until now on fixing the water issues here in Spain? And also, why haven't the water issues been fixed over the last 24 years, given that drought that you mentioned there some 24 years ago? And that's what some former politicians here in Spain are also saying, that why weren't the problems fixed back then? And to be honest, I've got no idea, and I imagine that a lot of people here also have no idea. But if you've got an idea why these problems have not been dealt with earlier, let us know in that comment section. One here from Flamenco Oz. No division on Bukele in Latin America. Most people in Latin America wish Bukele was running all of Latin America. Imagine talking about human rights to someone who took gangsters off the streets and made El Salvador safe again. NGOs and governments are out of touch. Yeah, Flamenco Oz, thanks for the comment and referring to the recently re-elected president of El Salvador, Mr. Bukele, and the fact that he was a little bit aggressive the other day against Spain and in particular some Spanish journalists when they questioned democracy in El Salvador. As we know, Mr. Bukele took a hardline approach in his first term as president of that country, cleaning up the streets, and some people questioned the way that he did that. And do more Latin American countries need presidents like Mr. Bukele? As Flamenco Oz points out in that comment, I don't know, but I'd love to hear your opinion 
on the matter. So please leave it in the comment section. One here from Michael. Hi, Stu. 63% of Spanish residents live in apartments, which is not good during a pandemic. I enjoy your videos. Keep up the good work. Yeah, Michael, thanks for the comment. And this comment in regards to another comment that we saw on yesterday's channel, somebody from the States asking the question as to why more people in Spain don't grow their own vegetables. And I said that basically, I think the reason for that is that a majority of people don't have the space to grow vegetables. Maybe they have a small terraced area or a small balcony and they could grow some tomatoes, but not much more than that, I don't think. Because as Michael points out in that comment, around 63, 64, 65% of people in this country live in apartments with not a lot of space. And another reason a lot of people don't grow their own vegetables here, or at least people that I know that have space to grow vegetables don't grow their own vegetables, is because they don't have time or the want to grow those vegetables. They find it easier just to go to the supermarket and buy them. One here from Belinda, I don't think the quote, our end will be your hunger, is meant to be threatening, Stuart. I think the farmers are merely stating facts. Yeah, Belinda, thanks for the comment and thanks to the few other people that had a similar comment to yours in the comment section after yesterday's video. I took those words that were said by farmers here in Spain yesterday, our end will be your hunger as a bit of a threat. But hey, it's just the way that I interpreted that phrase. Another one here from Mr. John, where I live in Spain, we have a permanent drought. In fact, nobody ever talks about it because it's normal here. We're lucky to have three rivers going through the city, bringing us water from places where it rains. So fortunately, we don't have to worry yet. Yeah, Mr. John, thanks for the comment and thanks for telling us about the situation where you live, the permanent drought situation. But luckily, you've got those three rivers which bring water from places where it rains. And I think the most important part of your comment is the last sentence where you say we don't have to worry yet. But hopefully, John, the people running things in your part of Spain have a plan in place just in case those rivers run dry. Let's hope. And the final one here from Anglo-Saxon Breed, no 90-day rule in Mexico, Cancun, and property half price. Cancun is paradise. The Anglo-Saxon Breed, thanks for the comment, and good to hear that over there in Mexico, in Cancun to be exact, there's no 90-day rule affecting the British. And property prices are 50% less than they are here in Spain. Sounds like an absolute paradise. However, can you really compare the two countries? Can you really compare Spain with Mexico? I don't know, especially when it comes to crime. Because as we can read here, the 10 countries with the highest crime rates in the world are the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Colombia, Myanmar, Mexico, Nigeria, Iran, Afghanistan, Iraq, the Central African Republic, and Honduras. So that could be one of the reasons why property is cheaper there. I don't know, but good luck with your investment. On that note, I'm going to wrap this video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.